In this lesson, we're going to focus on graphing the inverse function. So let's say if we have the function f of x, and it looks like this. Now let's say the inverse function is g of x. How can we graph the inverse function? How can we draw a rough sketch? Well, first, you need to draw the line y equals x. And the inverse function is a reflection of f of x across that line. So it's going to look something like, let me do that again, something like that. So that's going to be g of x, or the inverse function of f. It's symmetric about the line y equals x. Let's try some more examples. So let's say this is f of x. It looks like this. And let's say here we have the line y equals x. Go ahead and draw the inverse function of f. So it's going to look something like that. Let's call that g of x. So that's a simple way to draw the inverse function, uh, just using a rough sketch. Here's another example that you could try. And let's draw the line y equals x first. So let's say this is f, and it looks like that. Go ahead and draw the inverse function g of x. So notice that f started on the x-axis, the negative x-axis. So g is going to start from the negative y-axis. And it's going to just go up. And then draw it in a way that it reflects across the line y equals x. So that's going to be the inverse function g of x. Now sometimes, you may need to graph the inverse function using points. So let me use a smaller graph. So let's say if we have the first point, it's going to be at negative 3, 0. The next one is negative 1, 1. And let's draw the, the line y equals 1. The line y equals 1 will have the points 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, and so forth. It helps if you plot that first. Now the next point is going to be 1, 1, and then 3, 2, which is here. So that's going to be the graph of f of x. Using those points, go ahead and graph the inverse function g of x. So first I'm going to make a table an xy table, and this is going to be for f of x. So the first point was negative 3, 0. The next one was negative 1, 1, and then it was 1, 1, and then 3, comma 2. Now the inverse function, which we're calling g of x, will have these points. All you need to do is switch x and y. So the first one is going to be 0, negative 3, then 1, negative 1, 1, 1, and 2, 3. So plot them in order. Now let's start with 0, negative 3. That's right here. And this was on the x-axis. Now this point is on the y-axis. Now the next point, 1, negative 1, that should be here. And then connect the first point with the second point. And then we have the point 1, 1. So we need to connect these two. And then the next point is 2, comma 3, which is here. And you can see that 
the blue line is a reflection of the red line across the line y equals x. And so the blue line is g of x. Notice that the distance between the red line and the line y equals x is equal to the distance between the blue line and the line y equals x. They have to be equidistant from the line. Let's work on another example. So let's say we have the point negative 3, actually let's start with negative 5, 1, and then negative 3, 2, and then negative 2, 5, and then it's going to be 0, 1, and then 2, negative 4, and then 4, negative 4, and 5, 0. So let's say this is the graph of f of x. Go ahead and graph the inverse function, which we'll call g of x. So first, let's plot the points of the line y equals x. So 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 0, 0, and so forth. Now let's make a table. By the way, feel free to pause the video if you want to try it. So this is going to be for f of x. And the first point we said was negative 5, 1. And then the next point is negative 3, 2. You got to be careful with these steps because if you get the wrong point, if you write it wrong, then that's going to mess up the inverse function and its graph. So just be careful with these steps. Now after that, the next point we have, this one right here, that's it has an x value of negative 2 and a y value of 5. And then the next one is 0, 1. And then it was 2, negative 4. And then 4, negative 4. And then finally, the last one is 5, comma 0. Now, let's switch these points for the inverse function. So it's going to be 1, negative 5, 2, negative 3, 5, negative 2, 1, 0, negative 4, 2, negative 4, 4, and 0, 5 in that order. So don't forget to plot it one step at a time, connecting each point as you go. So let's plot 1, negative 5. That's going to be over here. Let me put that in blue. And then 2, negative 3. So that's in this region. And connect the first point to the second point. Now the next one is 5, negative 2, which is here. And let's label the points. Let's call this point A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So this is going to be A prime. As you can see, A and A prime, they're equidistant from the line y equals x. And B and B prime, they're equidistant from the line y equals x. So that tells you that you're on the right track. So this is B prime right here. Now the next point 
after 5, negative 2, that's going to be 1, 0, which is here. And then it's going to be negative 4, 2. And then negative 4, 4. And then 0, 5. So this is C prime, D prime, E prime, F prime, and then G prime. So you could see the symmetry if you compare the red line and the blue line. You could see that they're symmetric about the line y equals x. And so that's the graphical relationship between a function and its inverse function. And that's it for this video. So now you know how to graph an inverse function using drawing a rough sketch or using points.